Hey and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, King of Do, and uh, got some uh, interesting news to go over with you guys. Uh, but first, just wanted to give you a little update on where we're at. Uh, just about to cross 93 billion market cap right now. Uh, Bitcoin actually reached an all-time low dominance again. Um, so essentially, uh, it depends how you view the markets and uh, how you want to talk about it. But if you actually go and you look at the Bitcoin dominance back at early March, it was about 85%. It has lost a significant amount of dominance in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Um, and essentially, uh, its dominance has completely crashed and continues to crash every day to all-time lows. Um, with that being said, I still believe Bitcoin is going to be worth a whole lot more. Uh, more money than it is someday, which is like crazy, right? Um, just that something can lose so much influence and power in a certain space um, to other options, other solutions, um, and still go up in value. I think it's a testament to just how crazy things are, um, how things are growing so rapidly. Um, so all that being said, um, keep in mind that, you know, it's the Bitcoin dominance that's truly going down um, the most. Uh, there's going to be ups and downs. Um, and uh, you're going to see crazy uh, volatility. You're going to see uh, $100 swings up and down all the time. Um, so today we had a little bit of, uh, in my market update, I was talking about how it broke that support level. Um and uh, essentially, it's recovered a little bit. So what we might have seen there, um, and we're, it's potentially is still playing out right now. Um, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of hold right now, or I'm gonna be holding right now. Uh, I'm not too scared, even if it goes down to 2,400. Um, it dipped down to as low as uh, 2,470 very quickly uh, but it quickly recovered so nothing to be worried about uh, right now um, however we did we did uh, break that trend line so we we have to wait for some time to figure out where the new trend line is um, could we still go up yep absolutely uh, we're gonna be keeping track of that and all of us together will be keeping an eye on uh, Bitcoin and where it's headed because uh, like I say it's an early indicator of where the market's headed right now uh, most people buy Bitcoin first in order to invest in other um, coins and uh, you can expect to see more and more of that happening um, over the next few days it looks like if this continues to go up so what does that mean that means there's probably amazing opportunities in altcoins out there and uh, make sure you guys are taking some time to consider uh, diversifying your portfolio, uh, but be very careful about it. Just because uh, it's hot today, um, it could not be tomorrow. So uh, do your homework. Make sure you believe in the project. Make sure you, uh, you're wise with your investments. Um, some of you have been asking me for some long-term holds. Um, and I just want to do one real quick. I'm not, I should do a whole video on a long-term uh, people just want my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, um, but Factum is probably one of the ones that um, I really like for the long term. Um, they uh, are well established in the community. Uh, they have really good backing. Uh, the the business solutions um, that they present make sense. There's a lot of value add there. Um, I also like that the coin essentially is burned over time, so it's deflationary, things like that. Um, but there's a lot to learn about Factum, and I'm not going to do a Factum video right here, right now. So I just wanted to say, hey, some people want my opinion on what a long term is, because everyone in this space could talk about the short term all day. Uh, but I think Factum is really good. Um, when we had the market pullback a couple weeks ago, uh, Factum was one of the few that didn't match the full pullback, and that's what made me like it even more. I actually increased my Factum holdings during the the pullback, and that helped to keep my money safe for a while. 
Um, it, there was still a pullback, but it wasn't as significant um, as the rest of the market and the rest of the altcoins during that time. So um, I'm not I'm not here to say that it will be a uh, place to hide your money in the future again. However, what I do believe is that is an indicator of the type of money that is in fact, and that is the type of money that people believe in holding it and not letting it go, not looking for a quick profit. And so um, if you're looking for some long-term investments, uh, that is one um, that you should look at. It's, I, don't, I don't know, no one can predict, right? But I don't believe it's ever going to bring you, um, you know, thousands of percents of return um, like some of these coins can, uh, these smaller ones really quickly. Uh, but it is one that, you know, could double your money in a few months. Anything's possible. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, uh, my personal target for Factum, um, is, you know, in two, three years, we're talking years when I talk about this, but, uh, you know, I can see it being a triple digit, um, but it's going to take a long time to get there. And uh, it's going to depend on the adoption and the actual use and transaction rates uh, in order to uh, start burning a lot of it and things like that. So um, uh, two years, I think, is too aggressive for that number. Three years would be the earliest, but five years, I think, um, could be a little bit surprising. Um, so it's a, it's a place to maybe keep, uh, you know, if you have a, my portfolio, um, I have conservative and then I have, you know, aggressive, ultra aggressive type of investments in my portfolio. And, uh, that's one that I put, um, closer to the safe side of things. Um, you know, if I, if, if the market goes crazy, where would I want to put my money? Um, that would be one of them along with like Ethereum. Um, and, uh, you know, I may, depending on how hard the pullback is, may even move some into uh, a stable fiat uh, currency for a while. Okay, so all that being said, uh, let's do some news. Um, um, really, uh, more than just news, I'm going to bring some interesting facts and things I just wanted to talk about that I've been kind of learning about because um, I've been uh, just going at it crazy this weekend, nerding out you guys little update on my grid coin. I'm still looking for extra, extraterrestrial life using my computers. I'm helping the SETI project and getting grid coin for it. Um, you know, what, you know, uh, whatever you think about aliens and all that is besides the point. Uh, I'm contributing. I'm leasing or selling, renting, whatever, um, processing power in exchange for grid coin right now. So, um, and that's actually why I wanted to talk about a little bit in this video is I've had too many people tell me, hey, you should go look at Gridcoin. It's a competitor to uh, Golem. And uh, that is not true. Uh, it is a different type of solution. It's not exactly the same. Um, however, if you want to get an idea of what Golem will be like, what it's going to be similar to, you could go and try it out. So... Uh, Gridcoin is basically a solution that was created to try to help reward uh, people for uh, essentially people who are donating processing power, idle processing power. Um, in fact, I'm doing it right now uh, while I'm doing this video on my computer in the background. I've got a couple cores on my CPU, uh, literally digging through a bunch of data and doing a bunch of math for the SETI program. And I'm getting rewarded for that. And they wanted to reward people because essentially they figured, well, if we could at least pay for people's electricity, that's a good deal, right? Like they're getting a lot of processing power in this network. This has actually been going on for about 10 years um, that you've been able to uh, contribute processing power. It's just recently that uh, the last few years, I think it was like 2013, 14, I think it's 14, um, that you saw Gridcoin kind of come on the scene and try to figure out how to start rewarding these people. And uh, it's still uh, really early in development. It's very immature. Very immature. Um, but lots of potential. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, if you're interested in Gridcoin, you have to look at it as probably more like a five-year hold. Not a, not a you're going to double your money uh, next week. You might because of some pump and dump or some crazy announcement, but uh, Gridcoin has uh, got a long ways to go. 
Um, what we need to see Gridcoin be more successful is we need more universities, uh, more institutions to become aware of it and start using it uh, to basically empower their students to uh, use this processing power to accomplish their, their projects, essentially. So uh, that would be the first step because that's going to raise awareness um, at the ground level for long-term potential um, and it's going to bring uh, the right type of community into Gridcoin um, in order for it to be successful. So, Golem is not anything like that. Um, Golem is truly trying to be a world supercomputer, um, trying to go beyond uh, what Gridcoin is doing in that it will literally take uh, extremely hard computations and challenges and problems and distribute them into little pieces around the world so that we can all contribute to the answer. And um, it's a lot more powerful what they're trying to do. It's a lot bigger of a concept what they're trying to do. Um, and uh, the team working on Golem is uh, some of the best in class you can find anywhere in this space whereas Gridcoin has some amazingly smart people um, it's just more grassroots it's very grassroots right now so um, which is I think a great thing it's a good thing um, even even um, if you're not sure of it as an investment and things like that um, you know that you actually can um, stake it in the wallet and you can get a return on that so grid coins is something that looking at for a long-term hold um, in my opinion only long term so there's my long-term hold uh, advice for you today <laughs> um, so take a look at grid coin get to know it I think it's fascinating I think everyone should check it out if not only for um, the education purposes but maybe some of you actually want to donate your processing power from time to time um, that's very gracious of you and you're helping change the world. There's some amazing projects in there. Um, you actually get to pick which project you work on. So I picked the SETI project. Um, I only picked it because it was the one that I like actually have heard of and know about, right? So I was like, that'd be cool. And, um, I can actually talk about, talk about it with my friends cause they would probably have know what that is. But, um, there's tons of little programs, uh, going on at these colleges that are, they're really trying to change the world and, there's probably something you're passionate about and you can contribute and be rewarded for contributing as well. Um, so you could actually earn some grid coin if you wanted to do the processing um, on your end. Okay. Um, I wanted to go over Steam it real quick, just real quick. I wanted to make sure everyone knows that the white paper on their site is not correct. Um, I've been trying to spread uh, the news on that, trying to make people aware that the white paper is pretty much the original white paper that they released. They have yet to update it with uh, accurate information since it, it was released. And so the inflationary numbers in there are completely wrong. And um, maybe that's something that deterred you as an investor. Maybe it deterred you as a user, the high inflation rate. And essentially that has been completely changed. So at one point it was a ridiculous number. Um, now, it's about 9.5% inflation a year, and about 7% of that goes to the content creators. Um, so it's much, much less, and that's not a very big number at all. Don't forget that um, because it's a percentage, when you use a percentage, um, inflation, um, and it's fixed, right? If you fixed an inflation percentage, it actually, um, the total amount contributed every year goes down if that makes sense. So the percentage of the overall existing, it's smaller each year. Um, so, you know, eventually someday in the far future, even that amount will be pretty much um, nothing. It will be, uh, it won't, you it won't even notice it. Uh, a day will come where uh, that much steam it is getting lost because people send them to wrong transactions or something. But that's years and years away, but just to keep you guys informed and give you accurate information on the way that Steam it works, I think it's important you guys know that. Okay. Um, besides that, oh, I want to thank uh, the person who donated me Gollum. Thank you. 
very gracious. I love Golem. Um, I love it. Uh, I've been holding Golem for a long time, so I have lots of reasons to love it. Uh, but I think it's one of the most fascinating projects that are out there. I also think it's one of the projects that truly captivate the imagination of newcomers and uh, are really going to get people believing in what the potential of uh, not just Ethereum, but blockchain technology in general can do for the world. So thank you so much for that donation, uh, whoever you are. Um, next, um, Vitalik sent out a, a nice little thank you tweet. Um, today and he basically was saying hey you just wanted to thank a bunch of mining pools so there's a bunch of mining pools that responded to his request he requested he just asked all I did was say hey can uh, miners please maybe think about helping some of these cheap transactions and um, the mining pools responded well and essentially um, officially as of as of today the number is about 45 percent of miners now mine um as low as four shannon and maybe you don't know what shannon is but um shannon is a term used for the transactional cost the gas price don't forget that ethereum is a is actually ether ether is a gas it is a business expense and uh, essentially <laughs> Like, it's like sticking gas in your car. You have to have it to run. Um, so anyhow, miners basically um, are accepting lower um, transaction fees um, and actually processing these transactions. Um, a Shannon is equivalent. One Shannon is actually one billionth. That's a huge number. One billionth of an ether. So it's pr like free practically free so that's really really nice of the miners and the mining pools and everything because um now granted your transaction may take a really long time even though that they're accepting them there's a chance that it won't make it to the top so the highest ones are always done first does that make sense so if you pay more it happens faster um, when BAT token happened, that's how come 99% of all of it ended up with uh, a few hundred, a hundred people, essentially. Um, it's because they paid as much as possible um, to get in first. And all of you other people out there who did the right thing and were ready to go, and right when the block turned over and you sent your transaction in, even if you sent the transaction in at a, at a normal gas price, um, a reasonable gas price usually it's built into your wallets uh, what, and it's based on the averages even if you sent that in you didn't get in on BAT um, and so now BAT is completely controlled and manipulated and centralized within a hundred individuals and um, there all those hundred individuals um, have tripled their money and if you are lucky enough to get in on that lottery um, congratulations you tripled your money um, in the short term, all that being said, do not ever forget that that whole entire market is completely controlled. It's another level of manipulation. It's literally, it, it shouldn't even be traded because it's literally just completely owned by a hundred people. They might as well just start a board and all become friends because they're going to own that thing. So, uh, don't forget that there's a hundred people out there and with one keystroke could literally put BAT to a penny that's not even a joke now it wouldn't last long obviously because we'd all want to buy it but they like and they wouldn't be dumb enough to do it but don't forget that someone holds that much okay just don't ever forget it if you own some or you want to go buy some i'm not advising for it or against it i even considered it because i was like well i wonder if these whales will just never sell and it'll just keep going up and up and up <laughs> are we going to fight over the scraps for eternity and that we're fighting over one percent for eternity Man, if, if, if we're fighting over 1%, then the price today is is peanuts. If it, you know, I should be able to put a dollar in and get thousands of dollars back. So, um, anyhow. Anyhow. What a fascinating story that is. I love it. That's, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. That's just what I get excited about. Um, I often laugh at my job, too. When, when things just hit the fan... 
and it's so unexpected you never could see it coming i just giggle and laugh i don't know what it is i i think it's because i'm learning and um i'm learning some about something that i never could have imagined happening and it makes me happy um you know uh when you're in a safe environment and you're learning you have fun and i guess i'm having so much fun that i'm just laughing about it so all right um anyhow guys i'm just gonna wrap this up one last thing i just want to make you guys aware of a potential scam out there um, i don't think it's even potential i'll just give you my flat out opinion straight up uh, it's called project ethereum.com um, they're essentially trying to get people to donate ethereum to try to save the children of the world and by donating and signing your friends up you make more and they're promising that you're going to make tons of money by helping save the children and um it's really really bad uh, it's not even done that well but um anyhow i've seen some reports pop up of people accidentally getting confused about what that is um it has nothing to do with the uh, the ethereum foundation that vitalik is a part of there is no relationship um, even this site is uh, saying that they are a part or in partnership with a particular charity um, but the charity doesn't have any knowledge and they have no uh, record on their website or anything like that of uh, having any relations with this website or what what is called project ethereum.com so I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that um, you have a lot of friends and family getting into this stuff uh, when you know I had a I had a friend call me just the other day and he's like I talked to this guy and he said he like doubled his money I want to talk to you about this stuff <laughs> and I was like okay dude you know um, everyone wants to come in here and just make a bunch of money and that's all cool and that's all well and good um, when that happens you get this thing that I call stupid money and it's people that will basically just throw it at it even if they don't understand it just because they know that their friend threw money at it and made a lot of money well your friend probably there's a pretty high chance that your friend did a lot of homework a lot of research and has spent some time trying to figure this stuff out okay um are there some people out there that made it rich and just threw money at something they knew nothing about yes there are a ton of people out there like that um I've talked to people that literally own some of these currencies. They've made a bunch of money, and through conversation with them, I it becomes extremely clear they actually have no idea what it does. Um, and that's not to say anything bad about them. And they, you know, they maybe maybe they just believed in it, or maybe they, uh, for a lot of people, instead of going to the casino, it's like, hey, this is where I gamble, and they're having fun doing that. That's always going to happen in every market. So more power to them. Um, but anyhow, all that being said, um, be safe out there, guys. Uh, look out for potential scams. Make sure you're making people aware um, and educating your friends and family who are getting into this space. Offer to help them. Um, help them with their first few transactions, things like that. Set them up. Uh, you investing in them um, is going to pay back dividends um, for you in the long run. So, All right, guys. Uh, really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, that's all I got for the news today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, share, comment, go to Steam it, upvote. Oh man, Steam it's getting out of control, guys. I really appreciate you guys upvoting me there. I had a record day yesterday, like not just like a, a new, like, like double my all-time high on on Steam it for a day. So super thankful for you guys doing that. It means the world to me. I can tell that a lot of you are starting to get your accounts um, approved. And you guys are starting to upvote me. I see some names upvoting me that I recognize, and I thank you guys. Um, but it's 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 just getting out of control. So, whoo, having a having a good day today, guys. These markets are just flying right now. I just checked the charts there. So, <laughs> having a good day. All right, guys. I uh, appreciate your time. I hope you come back soon. And uh, until next time, I am the King of Dew. May the force be with you. You guys have a great day.